Hello, and welcome back to Dreamforce 2024, where we're really digging into what's been going on. There's been a ton of announcements last Thursday around Agent Force and Data Cloud, and we're going to be digging into all of this. I'm Rob Streche, a Managing Director with the Cube Research, and I'm joined by George Gilbert, who's been doing a ton into these data platforms. And to really bring it home, I'm so excited to be joined by MK, who's the president and CTO over Einstein One, Data Cloud, MuleSoft, and Tableau. So great to have you on, MK, because I think, again, when we start to dig into what some of these things that you've been announcing are, there's some really impressive stuff in the, I would say, in the world of agents going on. And for us, we look at this as huge piece of making AI a reality for customers. So why don't you kind of help us understand what some of the things that have been announced, what may be some of the things coming, you know, today, uh, and what we will be talking about into the future here. Awesome, first of all, thank you. Privileged to be here, it's been, it's a, it's a great, uh, I guess, audience to be able to talk to. So uh, what you're going to be seeing all through Dreamforce is this agent force. What agent force is, think of it as the next evolution of our AI wave. We had AI wave one, which was our Einstein's predictive. The AI wave two was all our co-pilots with generative kind of AI. And really, we're now entering the age of agents. What agents, in a very simplified term, is just AI that's the next level, which can plan better, and it can do more complex tasks for you. And in many cases, it'll eventually lead to the more autonomous AI, which can do things for you automatically, right? And the big announcements we have is that our platform is going to be one of the most comprehensive platforms for agent development. And that means, think about any business in the world. What do you do normally? You do advertising, marketing, you do sales, you do online commerce, you do service, right? And you do analytics. Imagine all of them on a platform on which now you can have agents that can help you through all of these process and more. That's kind of our big announcement. And uh, part of the things is also all the developer tools around it, all the data that's going to ground it, right? And all the interesting reasoning capabilities that make it possible in the line of work. Those are our big announcements. So maybe let's, let's elaborate on that. One of the things that would distinguish, you, you did the foundational work with Data Cloud, which provides like harmonized context. And by harmonized, I mean we get away from 60 years of silos of application automation and analytics, and you've up-leveled that to the customer 360, the customer journey. Right. But then when we build agent-based applications, there's a couple things that seem to be unique. One is, for the, it's a breakthrough in enabling corporate developers to build sophisticated applications because they can teach them rather than specifying Correct. exactly what has to happen. You seem to have several unique differentiators. One is the harmonized data. So you're dealing with customer 360 journey, so the people, places, and things, and activities, not social security numbers, bits and bytes. Right. The other is you're integrated within the surfaces of your operational applications Correct. so that the outcomes of the agent's actions become teachable moments. Elaborate on that and elaborate on these differentiators that everyone who's coming at agents from different mm. angles, they can't put all those pieces together. Beautiful. I think I can uh, answer all that with like one sentence, which is data plus agents plus CRM plus humans. Let me elaborate that. What I mean by that is... If, let's say, uh, if your chat GPT or whatever says there are two R's in strawberry, we all just laugh at it, right, and move on, and yes, they've fixed it in GPT-4 mm -hmm. now, but but really imagine if you now rely on that agent to tell you what's your next quarter's results gonna be, right? If you're gonna rely on your agents to do your business, or even more, if you're putting the agents in front of your customers, and the customer is asking a question, it better respond right, right? And how does it respond? It's not like people are asking some random questions about the internet or the World Wide Web, right? They're really asking about your customer, your sort of business's data. And so data becomes a very, very important ingredient in an agent's success. But if you look at every company in the world, I can guarantee you every company, including Salesforce, data is fragmented, right? Like it's just a simple customer information. Like if I say George, it's probably stored in 15 different systems. Right? It's just 
natural, right, evolution of the system. And so what we did with Data Cloud was to be able to harmonize all that data first. And harmonize doesn't mean copy all that data because people will be like, we're not trying to create a data gravity and suck all your data, right? We're saying some cases you'll pull the data to us, some cases you can leave the data where it is, we have zero copy, right? That's the first level. The second level is uh, creating that harmonized canonical reference model because something as simple as a user is called a contact in sales code. It's called a profile in your website. It's called a subscriber in marketing, right? Schema shapes are so different. And so we harmonize it. Then the next step is identity resolution. Because George, you probably have five different IDs across the systems, right? And an interesting example is we used to think uh, in salesforce.com that we are 200 million visitors. Turned out after we had data cloud, it was really 98 or 100 million because people had different IDs. They were the same person. And so this then unifies it. And that helps us get the 360 view, right? I know exactly George or Rob, like, okay, you opened this email, you had this service case, sales uh, thing, and all that stuff. And also it's important that because with Salesforce, we have all those applications, we have all that data flowing in. Like whether you opened an email or not, whether you have a case or not, whether you have your sales, uh, whether you purchase a sales or not. Then the next step is if you want to be able to do RAG on top of them. And this is not just structured data with vector databases and embedding. We have all the unstructured pipe as well. So with this structured and unstructured data, you want to ground it with your agents, right? That's where the data plus agents come in. And this is where we give a lot of tools like Prompt Studio and others for admins to customize it. Because your company's brand voice may be different than, say, my company's brand voice, right? So you want to customize it. And so we give you all those tools as developers. And then finally, you want to expose those agents in the line of work, right? Whether it's a service agent in your service case, whether it's a salesperson or a marketing agent, right, that is helping you with your campaigns. But there's one more thing too. Our agents are also differentiated because you can escalate to humans. Very, very important because we're built on the same sort of bots and other foundation. The final thing is that feedback is flowing too. Right, like when you when you when your agent is making a sale recommendation, the sale actually closes. We have that data flowing back, so that's really that data plus agents plus CRM plus humans with the feedback that's closing the loop. That seems to be, as far as I can tell, unique. There there are other vendors more on the data and cloud application side right. that have you know long investment in low code tools, but they don't have the feedback loop. They might have the supervision. They don't have the harmonized data. That's right. So um, maybe talk about how, like, if a customer is trying to picture, you know, what's really a breakthrough both in accessibility of enterprise software and mm. the ability to customize, like, the 80% of activities we never could reach um, because you can learn now instead of specify. How do you get closer? It's not a, did I build out this process or application? But how do I collect the teachable moments to cover more interactions more reliably? Yeah, so the, the way it is is because the data is flowing, first of all, that's important, right? The feedback data is flowing. And when I say feedback data, it's not just whether you clicked on a website or not. That's certainly engagement data, right? It's all your business level data too, whether your sales closed, your service uh, closed, or your CSAT uh, scores, or people are leaving reviews on your website. Are they good, are they bad, right? All of those things are flowing. And so if you remember the early days or in predictive sort of days, that loop was important for your ML algorithm to get better. But in this new world, you're not gonna go modify OpenAI or other kind of tools. What you're really doing is making your instructions better. Great example is, for example, the Dreamforce app itself. We've been fine tuning it and we're not changing code. We're changing instructions. And we are learning based on what people are asking, what kind of responses, right? So you're fine tuning that system. And in many cases, we are automating that fine tuning too, right? Uh, and this is true in the security landscape as well, like where you have a lot of security signals flowing and we want to automate. And so the key thing we can do in this new world is giving better instructions and fine tuning the instructions based on all of the feedback that is flowing, what is working, what is not working. So it's a new development cycle where, I mean, before you had like a, an agile release cycle with microservices, and, right. but here you need to be collecting these, um, you want to get best practice for each task to be a narrow distribution and higher reliability. And so part of the tools is co collecting the supervised, human supervised reactions where they might edit a plan 
or provide feedback or just feedback directly from the app as to whether the plan succeeded. Right. And then in batch mode, I go, I guess you periodically update. So the, there's two parts to it, right? One is you want to have a dynamic plan because you don't know what questions the customers are going to ask, right? You're literally opening up your agent to all of them. And so part of the thing is we have this reasoning engine. We call it the Atlas reasoning engine, where we use very interesting techniques called ensemble rag and other things, along with hierarchical planning. So which means you want to try out, you want to go do something, get some results, and then keep learning from it. Right? Actually, if you ask the LLM again, and there are more techniques coming in as well, where you can actually ask the question again to the LLM, it actually refines the answer. Right? So there are like interesting techniques that we are learning where you can create dynamic plans based on the questions that are coming in, the data that is relevant to that question, and the feedback back from that user. So there is a little bit of a dynamism in that as well, as well as we want to learn from the bigger loop to say, okay, if this is a common occurrence, okay, maybe our topic needs more fine tuning. Maybe the instructions we give to the prompt needs to be tuned. That's the outer loop. So there's an inner loop that's happening in real time as the conversation is going on. There's an outer loop. And like, I, like you kind of mentioned earlier, we have the goodness that we have all the application surfaces and that feedback data is super, super valuable to make sure the sale is done the services handled correctly or the marketing campaign is actually working as, as determined. And, and I, th I think one of the things that's really interesting is the fact that everybody, as you said, maybe they not only spell strawberry differently, but they uh, actually, you know, how they define revenue mm -hmm. across all your customers right. has some intricacies to that. And when you start to look at when you're building for that persona that is going to build these agentic applications, these data products and right. data apps on top of Salesforce. Mm. How, do you, how do you look at it and say, hey, here's how they're gonna start from, you know, like you said, connecting mm. up like yep. mainframes when we were talking earlier and Correct. all the way through. How do, how do you look at that as well and say, yeah, this is how we, the personas are very different from the person who deals with the mainframe to the person who's dealing with Salesforce or the CRM aspect or service cloud. How do, how do you really look at that so that they can build those easily? To build those great, products? great question. So where we are starting off is a simple concept. We call it the agent builder platform, right? So all the 25 years that you, have maybe, you may be building, Apex code, APIs, data, everything else, we want to make sure all that knowledge can be used. So this is not some, something completely new stack where you have to start from scratch. We are saying, start with your base. Like, if you already have sales and service cloud, et cetera, you already have predefined business processes. You can expose them all now through this new agents, right? And this is where we have the notion of a topic where you sort of explain, this is what this thing does. This thing could be a business process that's about closing a sale or about creating a service uh, case and so on. The second thing is with the power of something like MuleSoft that we have, we can actually make mainframe stock. Not even mainframes, even your old Visual Studio or Visual Basic website you may have built. Nobody even is there probably to look at the code. Using RPAs and others, we can make all that talk. So that is on the API level. On the data level, this is we talked about data cloud, how we can now bring all the harmonious data together and actually surface it together. This, along with all the flow and other actions, can be used in your agent builder. And so all you have to do, by the way, this matter of minutes or hours, you can easily create these agents, which is, you just define the topic. You say, you know what? I want something to go satisfy my service resolution. And it could be calling this particular flow, looking up this particular knowledge articles, unstructured, and maybe like calling a MuleSoft action. With just that instruction, you have an agent ready, right? And then you publish to your website. That's about it. So we're bringing forth every investment you've done in the last, whatever, 20, 30 years to this new wave of AI. Let me did just ask, pop back up a level of abstraction. You know, there's been a dream for decades for applications to also be construction sets. Yep. You know, but we had this, we only could limit it to configuration before we'd break it and you couldn't upgrade it. Um, to what extent does the center of gravity of Salesforce now shift from application to application construction set where, you know, all the flows and the data models now are just building blocks and you can build unique operational 
analytics that are operational applications that are formed by analytics? Great question. So one of the things you will see also in Dreamforce, we are announcing this thing called Tableau Einstein, as you might have heard. Um, so what we're doing is we are bringing the entire analytical platform also on the same data cloud and agent force platform. What it means is your earlier question, Rob, you said how uh, people might define semantics differently. In fact, that's a problem because I might think ROI means this and then you have a different version of it. So we are defining this new thing called a semantic model. So you can actually, actually have one semantic model defined that works not only for your flow, but also for your agents, right, across the stack. The second thing is we're bringing all of that visual analytic and actioning frame into the same stack. That way your analytics is not a siloed thing on one side, but it's also part of your line of work. Okay, that's like a big thing we're doing. To sort of your earlier question, what we are looking at is agents gonna redefine everything we're doing, right? Everything a market is doing, everything a service person is doing, everything a salesperson is doing, and even beyond. And our goal is to make sure we have the common platforms so that you truly can have a super agent. Think about it. I go to a website. I don't care whether there's a marketer behind it, a salesperson, a service person. I want my job done. It could be a question that I ask saying, hey, where's my shipping order? It could also be like, hey, do you have the latest inventory for what I'm looking for, right? To like uh, closing, a, closing a deal kind of thing. And so we want to make sure these things flow seamlessly into these agents and they're able to actually do multiple persona and answer the right things. Uh, so that's like a big one. And from uh, an application construction perspective, like we chatted earlier, I think we may need more people knowing English and MPhils and <laughs> those kind of things because more and more it's gonna be fine tuning and asking the right question. Just like we all learned how to ask questions in Google when search came out, right? right. Same thing application programming and everything is gonna to change to be instructing what to do and aligning it with your business thing. Uh, that's yeah. that's the big change I'm seeing come. Yeah, being able to describe the architecture and how the people, places, and things come together right. is gonna be super important. I think one of the other things, and you know, as we're getting towards the end here, you know, you've had incredible growth of data cloud it's you know year over year growing i think at 130 yeah plus it's probably percent. the fastest yeah. growing ever yeah so you know congratulations on Thank that you. you know <laughs> when you start to look at this and say hey organizations are you know they have like you said they're not going to go and use you to create their foundation model that's right. not the business you're that's in. they're right. going to bring it they're going to ground it fine tune it that's right do you see that as how you're helping the process and how they are the agents helping them through that process or is it hey we've set it up inside the SaaS framework so that they can bring themselves through that great point so we have both right so we have made it all into SaaS so that it's easy right so you have your platforms you can connect now we also recognize that people may have a lot of investments whether it's on the data side or even the model side maybe they're fine-tuned their own models right many cases what we have done is an open and extensible platform. That's the zero copy for plugging in your data sources. That is the bring your own M or for predictive or bring your own LLM for LLMs too. Right? So we allow you to plug and play, but then we have sassified that whole experience so that it's as simple as you don't need to know where that data came from. You don't need to know where that model came from. As a marketer, sales, service, commerce person or analytics person, I just want to use the product, right? It works. And within all of those experiences, we obviously use agents to help it. Like if you see the new Tableau demos, you can use it yourself, Tableau agents, you can just ask an instruction. It creates a beautiful dashboards for you. You don't need to keep drag dropping. Or you're in a flow. You can just say, I want this flow to be created, or MuleSoft, or uh, Sales, Sales Cloud, right? You, you can just say, create my agent for me. So we are doing it in both ways. We're making it easy with our pluggable uh, thing, so you can go on an existing enterprise landscape and integrate to it. And then we're using agents for configuring all of these applications itself to make it even more easier. Yeah, that would seem to help uh, across the entire per set of personas that are actually using you. And That's I correct. really appreciate you coming on board, MK. Uh, again, I know George and I have way more questions. We'll have to do a follow-up because <laughs> we could dig in probably for about another hour. And I, I think you're so full of knowledgeable stuff. Two at least. At least, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe two. Love so, to. so thank you for coming on board. Thank you. And thank you for watching here at Dreamforce we'll, 2024. We'll be back shortly, so stay tuned and keep it right there.